G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, let's mark it down. 17th of December, 2000, uh, sorry, 17th of December, 2020, Bitcoin finally broke the 20K mark. Uh, and it done it in superb fashion as well. It was really hovering sort of between 17,000 and sort of 19,000, sort of 500 uh, for quite some time. Uh, and as I said in my video yesterday, I thought it would probably go down or travel sideways. And then I said, but it wouldn't surprise me if it did the complete opposite and went up. And guess what it did? Just to make me look silly and probably a lot of other people as well, it went up. And look, it was up at 23000 $443. So it's actually come down uh, nearly a thousand dollars. We can see uh, very quickly. So we've got to wait and see where the ride is here. But I mean, look, $640 billion. $645 billion. So we're still not at the, um, the trillion dollar mark and we're still not even at the 880, nearly 900 billion that we're at at the peak of the last bull cycle. So this is very, very early, but look at that, up 12.5%. BTC dominance, as I thought, has gained. Got up to nearly 65%. Uh, I think it might have even been 65% there for a while, but I wouldn't be surprised if people are taking profits. Uh, and look at gas prices, just jumped right up there, 179 guay. I mean, you know, don't try and do any transactions uh, with ETH at the moment. Uh, it's just going to absolutely kill you. And unfortunately, uh, that'll probably be the case going forwards from here. Another, uh, unfortunately, it'll just get super expensive to do it. But, you know, that's the world we live in, unfortunately. Now, let's have a look. What have been the big movers? All right, 24 hours, Bitcoin, I mean, did 16%. Was that the biggest? No. XRP outshone. Look, this got down to 45, 44 cents, and I'm kicking myself that I didn't buy any more. Uh, I waited because I thought, oh, it might go a little bit cheaper, uh, and it just rocketed up. But look, it's already down, you know, 2.3%, and it's down over the seven days anyway. So we just need to be careful. Bitcoin pumped up a lot, uh, and as I said, it wouldn't surprise me if it got to around $25,000 and had a 30, 40% retracement. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I just wouldn't be surprised, surprised, excuse me, if it did happen. Litecoin, wow, this is uh, on a run and doing well. I'm glad I got my bag of Litecoin. I nearly traded it in a few months ago. It just wasn't really going anywhere and doing anything. So I'm glad I held on to it. Now, what about losers? Were there any real losers? Unfortunately, they were Elrond, but look, they had a big pump before Bitcoin moved. So this was always going to happen, but they're still up 50% for seven days. So this is not all bad news. Same as Bancor, down, you know, 11, nearly 12%, but they're still up 60%. So, you know, other than these really first three, uh, and this one's almost a double digit, the rest of them are uh, not too bad at all. Uh, Algorand, Blockstack, I've got both of these, so that's a bit disappointing. But they're still up over the week, and they will start to follow all the others. VeChain, just kind of sitting normal. Uh, I have some of that as well. All right, let's go have a look at a story here. Bitcoin shortage as Wall Street FOMO turns Bitcoin whales into plankton. Institutions make mincemeat of the whales who just recently held huge sway over market sentiment below $20,000. Bitcoin is seeing a new kind of flipping above $20,000 as its original whales keep selling their coins to bigger institutional buyers. Data from on-chain analytics service CryptoQuant shows that despite long-term investors rushing to offload Bitcoin at a profit, buyer demand is still outpacing them. And look, I think this is going to continue for quite some time. Uh, I think, you know, these old Bitcoin holders, uh, they probably sold a whole stack now uh, just to make some good coin. And then they're slowly going to sell less and less and less because they're going to see that the demand is just, uh, it's too intense. You know what I mean? You can just slowly sell them off over time and make a whole lot more money uh, than just kind of sell them all now and thinking that Bitcoin will go below $20,000 again. Look, it might never go below 20000 again. Probably will, but it just may never, so you don't know. And as they said, you know, big business, they're coming up, you know, they're buying hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin at the moment. Literally hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. So, you know, OGs have had it for a really long time. 
Uh, you know, they're not selling everything that they have for twenty thousand dollars, but they are just making sure they stay liquid and selling it. And that's only some of them, not all of them. We need to remember uh, the miners. Excuse me. They hold tons of Bitcoin, tons and tons and tons. So they are always sort of selling. They keep some, you know, in storage for, you know, days like this where the price is much better. And so they will just continue to sell. They have to sell to remain liquid. But as the price continues to skyrocket, they can start to sell a little bit less and they can sort of hold on to a few. But I do think the buying pressure is just going to continue. I don't think it's going to slow down anytime soon. You know, the institutional FOMO hasn't even really started yet. Just the kind of big early adopters have got in. There's still so many other institutions and businesses out there that have not even begun to buy Bitcoin yet. And they'll probably only start around about now. They'll be, oh, look, it's at an all-time high. That human psyche that we have, now's the time to buy. And look, I'm not saying buying Bitcoin now is a bad idea. Uh, it all depends on how far you think it's going to go up. But you just need to remember at these prices, there is the possibility that a 30-40% correction comes. And all of a sudden, we're back down at around sort of $14,000. Uh, and as long as you can hold through that uh, long term, you're going to be fine. But if you're just looking to flip stuff, then you're probably going to get burnt and wrecked. But look, that's why I am not a trader. I'm an investor. You know, I, I was lucky. Uh, the crash happened. I had some cash. Uh, I got in. Uh, and I've been doing pretty well ever since. You know, I can't complain. Not enough to retire or anything like that. Unfortunately, I'm a long, long way off uh, having enough money to retire. But look, I put what I could in, and I again, I got lucky. I got in at a really good time. Not the best time. I didn't get into Bitcoin when it was in the 3000s or the 4000s. I got a little bit in the $5,400 mark, but mainly I got uh, most of the Bitcoin that I got... Uh, at sort of 6,400 to around about 7,400. Uh, I was lucky to uh, get into Bitcoin there. And same with Ethereum. I think I got in at 100, I got some at $160 or $180. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, most of it more around kind of the $200 mark. Uh, again, so I just put in the money, you know, that, that I could. Uh, I wish I could have put life savings into it and all the rest of it. That would have been amazing. Uh, but unfortunately, I couldn't. But I made myself, you know, a good position for, you know, what I would consider as I'm just a regular Joe. And look, I'm hoping that uh, I will be able to do well with it. And at the moment I am, I'm, I'm definitely doing well. But again, nowhere near enough to retire, so that's a shame. But anyway, back to the story. I'm rambling on about me at the moment. Yeah, I don't think uh, Bitcoin's going to stop being bought up anytime soon. I think that institutional FOMO is just going to start now. So it's really going to ramp up. And, you know, I wonder whether maybe the sort of 25 to 35K range, uh, whether it'll even be possible for a decent pullback to happen there. I just think the buying pressure will be too much. So we might actually have to wait till sort of 50,000 uh, before we get any real resistance. Again, you know, time will tell. I, I don't know that for a fact. I'm not basing that on anything other than just my gut feeling and what I'm seeing in the market. But look, I've been wrong before. All right, fund managers steer clear of Bitcoin. So this isn't Australia, so this is disappointing. So Australian fund managers are yet to be sold on digital currency uh, Bitcoin as a legitimate investment class despite its soaring price and increasing popularity amongst Australians. Bitcoin, the world's most popular cryptocurrency, cracked US 20,000, which was 26,000, for the first time uh, in Australia, for the first time in history on Wednesday, eclipsing its massive run in 2017, which saw it fall just shy of the notable milestone. The price has since continued to rise, with Bitcoin trading at uh, 21,780 or about 28,000. Uh, Australian, so 21,000 US, 28,000 Australian. Look, again, it cracked 23,400 something uh, US, and that was over 30,000 Australian dollars. Now, this is interesting though. Jeff Wilson, so he's the chair, chairman and founder of a $3.5 billion fund, Wilson Asset Management told The Age and the Sydney Morning Herald while he, believes, while he believed Bitcoin's underlying blockchain technology could be the future of payment systems, he was less bullish on the asset itself. Now look, he's been around for a while, he's managing billions of dollars, uh, and I hate to say this and do this, but have a look at him. He's old. It is really hard as you get older 
to be able to you know stay up to date with all the new things that are happening and this happens to the best of them all these great investors and all that you know when their 20s 30s and 40s do really well and maybe even into their 50s and 60s but then when they start to move on and i'm not saying he's you know 70 or 80 years old or anything like that but he just he's in that older age group where he just doesn't understand he just plain and simply doesn't understand and can't see what's coming um you know again this is my personal opinion not financial advice outside of some random thing happening with the bitcoin code i just can't see it failing i see it only going from strength to strength to strength doesn't mean we won't have any dips doesn't mean we won't have another bear cycle uh, but i do see in the long term it just continuing to you know basically go up other than again you know the 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 normal pullbacks that you expect from any kind of market and it will start to uh, not be as volatile and people have to move on to the next thing and you know find the next market where big gains can be made and look in all fairness i think that's altcoins we've still got probably a decade or two of uh, really good altcoin uh, gains to be made and look maybe even still another uh, the same with bitcoin but at some stage bitcoin's going to level out a bit whether that's you know this bull run maybe i think that's unlikely whether it's the next bull run which is more probable but maybe even the next sort of bull run after that we get to whatever price it is a million dollars two million dollars five million ten million or you know i don't know i'm not saying bitcoin gets to 10 million i'm just saying at some stage it will level out that's just the way it works uh, and the big players have got will have got in and will manipulate the market unfortunately like they always have but the altcoin space that's where I see the biggest gains will be made, uh, sort of going further on from Bitcoin. But we just need to be careful with the altcoins because there are so many scams out there. They haven't stood the test of time. Uh, and yeah, there's a lot of rug, rug pulls and all the rest of it, exit scams. So buyer beware when you're you know, playing around with the altcoin space. I still think Bitcoin's the safest bet. Right, another one for the Australians. So the Australian share market ends on a high after Treasurer says recovery will be faster than forecast. So that's great news for Australia. You know, we really uh, need an opportunity like this to build ourselves up uh, in the world sort of dominance of, you know, just trade and finance and all the rest of it. And in Australia, we're lucky that uh, our borders are water. So we don't just have people walk across uh, borders and things like that. Uh, we have good uh, tight controls here in Australia around COVID and that we've been, you know, semi-lucky at least to say that it hasn't really made a complete mess of Australia. But look, in saying that, just today there is uh, conversations, uh, not conversations, there's news uh, that we're having uh, a small breakout in New South Wales. And look, that may also play a part in other states in Australia and you know, until there's a vaccine that obviously uh, doesn't have any wild side effects and there's stories that there are people that have had allergic reactions and that to the vaccine, at least Australia is closed off by its border uh, and we're you know, controlling who's coming in and who's leaving and all the rest of it. So we should be able to recover faster than some of the bigger places, i.e. like the US, Europe and places like that. But again, there's no guarantee that will all be dependent on how Australia manages uh, this, you know, epidemic that's uh, gone on around the world. But it sounds like it might be a good time for Australia to really become a leader in the recovery phase. Uh, again, time will tell. Now, again, if you think uh, Bitcoin uh, is, you know, kind of at its peak, think again. Bitcoin mining rig prices are up 35% since the start of November. That's just last month. Shortage, shortages force miners to turn to secondary market. So they're buying up secondhand uh, miners and all the rest of it. This is really just starting to build and starting to kick off. This is only going to get bigger. We really are at the very early stages of this bull run. Uh, you know, we'll go back and have a look at the chart very, very shortly, and, and I'll show you what I mean. You know, we had to get to that $20,000 level, break the old all-time high, for it to really set off the bull market you know i guess if you kind of want to i won't say technically but if you know you want to go by past experience the bull market doesn't really start until it breaks its old all-time high that's when things start to get crazy and wild and you really see these you know outrageous sort of prices 
And here we go, let's have a look. So here's the Bitcoin market, all right? We can get rid of these little things. We saw it was sort of ranging in here. It's broken out of both of them. So let's get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. Anytime, thank you, that's gone. And that's gone. All right, and look at that. There was that kind of, you know, 19.5 level and boom. As you can see, we're right up here at 23,800 on Bitstamp, 23.8. But we've pulled back pretty quickly and now we're ranging around here. And again, we just need to watch out. We don't see some of these green, can uh, red candles in the next few days. And again, I showed this the other day. I'll show it again. So we get to 25,000. Look what a 40% retracement does. Takes us down to 14,000, sort of $600. This is possible. This is what has happened uh, previously. I'm not saying it's going to happen now. I think there's too much enthusiasm and buying from institutions and all the rest of it. But this is something we just need to calculate for. So, you know, have some money on the side. And if it dips, buy the dips. Don't throw everything at it with the first little dip. Because, again, it might do something like this. And then it might do something like this the day after. And then it might do something more like this the day after that. So always keep a little bit on the side and just kind of, you know, measure your way in and out of it. And again, that whole dollar cost average theory, I love it. I really do think that's the best way. Uh, again, I've been dollar cost averaging uh, since I got back in not long after uh, the crash. And again, I was lucky I had some cash uh, on the side that when that crash happened, uh, I was able to get in. But unfortunately, uh, you know, again, I was waiting thinking it'll probably go lower, it'll probably go lower, and it didn't go lower. Uh, and that, again, is just part of the human psyche. I'm not infallible from that. Uh, I'm exactly like everybody else. Uh, so I could have bought, you know, Bitcoin around about that $4,000 to $5,000 level. And I thought, nah, this was a fake out. It was going to pump up and go back down to, you know, maybe, I don't know, two or $1,000. And of course, it didn't. But anyway, I was still happy to buy some of basically the six and $7,000 range. Uh, I'm doing pretty well right now. I've, you know, tripled my money. Uh, in sort of Bitcoin, you know, not exactly because I've been buying after it, so that uh, brings it down. But you know, the sort of I guess the bulk of the money that I put into Bitcoin, I have tripled uh, after that. It's all been dollar cost averaging sort of stuff. All right, let's get rid of this now. Let's have a look at the previous cycles. Oh, I don't know. Squash this down a bit. So there we go. We can see what the cycles have done before. Okay, let's go across to here. So we can see here was the halving, and this is where it really started to go parabolic. It had some good moves here before the halving. Don't get me wrong. There's the cycle low. Had a good pump, sold off a bit, had a good pump, and then we hit, there's the halving, uh, but it's also kind of reaching old all-time highs around about here. And that's when it just really started to go crazy. And again, we had a couple of dumps, don't get me wrong, before we got to here. This was that next peak cycle. So then from there, we had to go through that bull market. But again, if we go from here, this is back when Bitcoin was $1,100. So 1100 bucks. We have to go all the way across here till we basically sort of get to here. Just tipped it. And of course... Uh, it just tipped it like it did uh, here with the 20, 000, the 19,500 and fell back. But then when we got to it over here, again, it, it was a fake out this time. First time it tipped it over here. Then it was a fake out, broke out above, pulled back down below. So this is what I'm watching for here, that we've gone to that 25-ish K level uh, and we break back down to 15,000, 16,000. But then... That's when it really just starts to rocket. That's when things just start to go silly and get absolutely crazy. So again, it went from $1,100, or this is $1,200, let's say $1,100 sort of back down here, to basically $20,000, it nearly 20 x It was a little bit less than 20 x but let's just sort of, you know, round it off. Oh, actually, let's bring it down one then. 18 and a half x uh, we could say, something like that. That is amazing. And now, look what we're doing. So again, I'm, I'm thinking this might be a bit of a fake out like it's happened before. We then have a retracement and come back down and sort of test this $16,000 level. I'm not saying it's going to happen. We could easily 
just go up to you know 30 35,000 and then come back down and test sort of this you know 18 19,000 dollar range or we just smash straight through it all and go to 50 something k and then have a 40 percent retracement from 50k you know no one really knows what's going to happen it's all just hypotheses and theories and all the rest of it uh, and I'm just waiting to see. Again, I've got cash on the side. I'm ready to go. I did buy some Synthetics Network today. Uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see whether it was a good time. Because again, if Bitcoin rejects from sort of, excuse me, you know, let's say 24,000, retraces sort of 30%, it's going to come back down to here. So it's a little bit uh, lower than uh, this $19,000 level and basically around kind of the seventeen and a half ish thousand dollars so I'll probably have lost a little bit of money in synthetics there uh, but again it was only a few dollars it wasn't a ton uh, I am waiting for a good retracement before I really start to deploy the cash that I have on the side and look it's not you know hundreds of thousands it's not even tens of thousands of dollars or anything like that it's literally I got a couple of thousand bucks that if we see a retracement uh, I'm probably put some into Bitcoin, some into Ethereum, some into Chainlink, some into Synthetics Network, uh, and then you know maybe some more Stella uh, and XRP. But really, I've I've built the positions that I'm, I want uh, in pretty much all my altcoins. Uh, uh, once, you know, again, if there is if there's a reasonable dip, uh, I'll put some more cash in. But after that, I'll just be sort of dollar cost averaging into uh, the coins that I know or at least I feel, are going to be around for the long term. So that's going to be things like Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum. And depending on what the cycle high is, so if Bitcoin makes it to $200,000, I think 40000 uh, 40, will probably be the next low. So any Bitcoin that I buy after $40,000, because I'll just keep dollar cost averaging, that is the Bitcoin that I will be selling. I'll probably not sell any of the Bitcoin that I've bought under the 40,000. I may sell you know, a little bit, but probably not. It'll just be the Bitcoin that I've bought after that 40,000 uh, that I'll sell uh, you know, on sort of you know, where, where I feel uh, it's starting to come down. I'll set some uh, markers you know, for sort of 15, 20% lower than where they currently are. And if they come down and touch them, then I sell a bit. And if it goes down a little bit lower, then I sell a little bit more and a little bit lower and I sell a little bit more and just try and scale out on the way down. Because, you know, scaling out on the way up uh, is pretty hard. Uh, and again, I'll have, I'll have some targets anyway. You know, Bitcoin gets to sort of around about 100,000. I'll probably sell a little bit of Bitcoin there. Bitcoin gets to sort of 150,000. And a little bit before the big evens, I'll probably sell a little bit. If it gets to two hundred thousand, I'll sell a little bit. And if it gets to two hundred and fifty thousand, I'll sell a little bit. And if it gets to you know again three hundred thousand, then I'll sell a little bit. And I'll just keep selling a little bit until I'm happy with sort of uh, where it's at. And then again, even maybe on the way down, if I haven't sold any yet and I've just simply missed the mark, uh, I'd rather sell on, sort of on the way up than on the way down and be losing. But I may miss the mark. I, you know, it may be at a hundred thousand. I think it's definitely going to one hundred and fifty thousand. So I don't sell any, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's got down to uh, eighty thousand pretty quick, and then seventy thousand, and then you know, fifty and uh, forty thousand. I'll make sure that I have some markers set for should it fall downwards uh, that I sell at those prices. Anyway, that's my plan. All right, what a great day! We're going to celebrate the seventeenth of December, two thousand and twenty. Bitcoin finally broke over $20,000. Uh, the bull market, uh, the bull run has officially started now. And look, ladies and gentlemen, we have no idea what price Bitcoin could go to or any other coin. But just enjoy it. But make sure you have a plan. Make sure you're going to take some cash at certain points. You know, at least maybe get back the money that you put in, if not even extra. But again, you know, I would say roughly sort of in the second half of next year, start to take some profits. If you haven't already done so before. Again, if you get into a coin and it's 30 x get your money out. Just get what you put in out and then you can let the rest ride. Do whatever you want. If it goes to zero, it doesn't matter. You got your money back. Uh, again, 30 x is, you know, you'll have to be pretty lucky to do 30 x but it's not impossible. And look, you might even have some coins that do 100 x You might just get that lucky. Enjoy the ride. You know, 
try not to sell all at once at any one price unless you know again that's just your plan you buy something at a dollar and you say it gets to five dollars i'm selling everything that's cool you'll have made money uh, there's a saying that i like to live by no one ever lost money by taking profits <laughs> it is so true but it's hard for people to do and i got burnt last time i've told the story in late 2017 i turned 800 australian dollars into about four and a half thousand australian dollars and i did it in a matter of just a couple of weeks but then i watched that four and a half thousand turn into about three hundred dollars um, only months later so that really really hurt well not only months later it was quite a few months later but i always just thought it's going to keep going up it's going to bounce back and it wasn't i didn't understand the cycles i won't make that mistake this time all right thanks for tuning in stay safe be kind to one another we should all be on that great on that game train today and i'll see you next time